What's up, moviegoers? Welcome to the Markio Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony. In this episode of the Markio Podcast, I'm talking about Leatherface, or the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Leatherface. The movie was released on October 20th, 2017, has a runtime of 90 minutes, and grossed on $958,000 at the box office. The movie stars Stephen Dorff and Lily Taylor. And basically, this movie is an origin story about how Leatherface, the character, came to be and came to be what he is known for, as being this menacing creature, this menacing character. And the Sawyer name is mentioned in this. I watched it because I was very curious. I like Lily Taylor as an actress. She's very underrated. If you don't know who Lily Taylor is, she played the mother in the Conjuring movies that was being possessed by the house, and she's the one that got possessed by the witch. And Stephen Dorff in this movie is Texas Ranger Hal Hartman, and it was good to see. It was different. Uh, the only thing I didn't like was that you didn't need to make this movie to tell us how Leatherface came to be, how he became this menacing person, what happened to him, who did what to him in order to become this way. Even though it's a prequel to the 1974 movie, you know, they really need to stop making prequel sequels or sequel prequels where the movie takes place before the first one, but also acts as a sequel to the first one, or it's also a sequel or a mirror sequel to the first one. I don't know how writers and filmmakers figure this shit out, but it's so confusing. This movie is categorized as a horror film, while the other Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies are considered slasher movies, with only part two being considered a black comedy slasher or a dark humor slasher movie. So this is the first movie in the franchise, which is the eighth installment, to say that it's the horror film genre, which is very different, which is, you know, interesting. I didn't like this because it didn't feel like it was a Leatherface movie. It didn't feel like that at all. Basically, we just get to see how, we just get to see how the character of Sawyer, Jebediah Sawyer, I believe, and uh, becomes Leatherface, basically of the torture and the torment he went through as a child and who did everything to him and the mental institution that he's put into or taken out of. It's, it's interesting. Now, the film takes place in the canon established by the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, chronologically taking place before the two films. So, if you want to figure it out, here it is. It's this movie, Leatherface. It's then the 1974 movie, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And then, it's Texas Chainsaw 3D. So, those three movies right there are the culmination of that trilogy. Which, with 2, 3, and 4 being its own thing. And then the remake is its own movie. And then, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning taking place four years before the remake, before Jessica Biel. It's very confusing, very interesting of how everything works. And the thing is, is that when you dumb it down, so to speak, for people, and saying, where does this movie take place? What is this? What is that? They start understanding that, okay, there's too many elements of horror. There's too many elements of things that go into a horror franchise like this. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies aren't the most popular in the horror genre. Not many like it because of the violence or the gore or the interesting aspect. But the character of Leatherface and how stuff he went through, showing that what he went through in this movie and culminating in the other movies after this is interesting. You more so feel sorry for him because that's what happens in any horror movie. We feel sorry for the main horror icon. Uh, Leatherface being one of them, and Jason Voorhees being the other one. So after a while, we watch the movies like, we want to be scared. But yet, yet, there's an underlining factor where we feel for these people. They're human beings like ourselves. And then you wonder why, how, and what happened to them. Basically, it's trauma and mental state and mental capacity that changed them and who they want to be. And that's what this movie is. This movie grabs a hold of the mental capacity of what Leatherface is, brings it down, and drives it up to 100 and basically revealing of how he became who he is. The movie did have a theatrical release, but it was very limited. But once it was released on video on demand and other 
streaming services, this movie gained a cult following. And when you see Lily Taylor and Stephen Dorff in the movie together, it's great. Stephen Dorff in the horror is fantastic. And Lily Taylor being in a horror movie is always good. She did The Haunting in the 90s with Liam Neeson, Catherine Zeta-Jones, and Owen Wilson. Then she did The Conjuring. So it's really good to see Lily Taylor in a horror movie. And being the matriarch of the Sawyer family is even better. So now you might be asking yourself, Anthony, what is your ranking of all the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies? Well, I'm going to tell you. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the 2003 remake. Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Texas Chainsaw 3D, Leatherface. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. So there you have it for my Texas Chainsaw Massacre discussion. Uh, let me know what your ranking is of these movies. And if you've seen all of them, and I'm pretty sure not many of you have seen all of them. I'm pretty sure most of you stopped after the remake because you didn't know that there were three more movies after this. But yes, there are three more movies after this. So be sure you check them out and, you know, let me hear your, you know, thoughts and ideas of what should have been done. Should they have stopped after the remake? Or should they have stopped with Leatherface the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, which was released in 1990? I'm really curious to hear your answers about the questions I just asked. And thank you for tuning in to my discussion about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And be sure you click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell for new videos and new podcast episodes on the Mark Your Productions YouTube page. And follow Mark Your Productions on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And follow me, Anthony, your host on Instagram and Twitter at Mr. Filmstock. And follow the Mark Your Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'll leave a link to all the social media accounts in the description box below. You can check it out and follow along. All right, everyone, that does it for today's episode. I'm your host, Anthony. Thanks for tuning in. He's staying right there. What for? He's not under arrest. He's under protection from you.